Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Saving Sutherland. So we've got some fixtures to review. We're in the January transfer window and we have made a few signings. And I've made one huge mistake. So this is our first signing. His name is Matteo Rios. He's Colombian. He's a centre-half. And if you can just check his stats here as a central defender, they are absolutely brilliant for an 18-year-old. This guy has the potential to be a world-class centre-back in my opinion. And we've got this guy in for the priceless sum of 1.7 million from America to Cali. He's played one game so far. He didn't do too well. But he's a three-star centre-back, which realistically means he could become a start-out straight away. Um, I'm pretty sure Lemos and Vadaska are classed as three-star by me assistant. So he's definitely coming into the first-team squad. And with Lemos being out for three months, he'll probably get a lot of game time. And this was our second signing of the January transfer window. Redjuan Amrani was signing from FC20 and as he, he, you can see he's a right winger. He's got absolutely brilliant attributes, particularly his physicals and his determination which I really like. So hopefully once he starts getting some game time you will start to see big improvements in his game. So as you can see that he's valued at, we bought him for 2.4 million. It was a bit of a bargain in my opinion. I'm trying to get him loaned out to get him the game time because I don't feel like he's going to get it there. We've got Duncan Watmore as the same play. Enzo Cabrera all who can play on that right hand side alongside the likes of Francisco Trincao and Wabi Kazri. We've got five players who could realistically start there so he's not going to get the game time here but I'll continue to try and get him loaned out during the January transfer window as long as someone's going to give him first team football. And this ladies and gentlemen was the huge mistake. Moyes Keane. Now I know you're looking at it and thinking why is that a huge mistake? He's got absolutely brilliant attributes. He's uh He's 19 years old, he's got a lot of room to grow, so why why is it a mistake? So, he was on loan from Juventus to Malaga. And that meant that when I signed him, when I put the offer in, I assumed he would stay at Malaga for the duration of the season. I didn't bother checking when I made the offer how, how it would all fall, whether he would join at the end of the season or he would join now. As it turns out... He could join right now. So he's joined right now, but he's played a game for Juventus and he's been playing for Malaga, which means he can't play for three teams in the same season. So now we've got a £32 million striker on sixty-five grand a week and he cannot play at all. So it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to keep him happy because nobody will put a loan offer in. The only team who could put a loan offer in is Malaga or Juventus. Uh, so we've got... One of the best wonder kids on the game, sitting on the bench, not even sitting on the bench because he had a player, just sitting in the squad doing absolutely nothing. And we signed him for £24 million, which I thought was a good deal. Uh, we've still got £75 million left in the budget. Uh, plenty of room in case I want to bring some other players in, but nobody's really stood out to us as of yet apart from Moise Keane. So the last time you met was the 2-0 home victory against Leicester City. We followed that up with a 0-0 away draw against Manchester City. This was a great performance because... They were top of the league, riding high. We managed to keep them up here. They didn't create too many chances at all, even though the stats say they dominated us. It wasn't like that. Highlights were very few and far between, and that was exactly the performance we needed against them. We then went away to Stoke City, who were sitting in six at the time, and we beat them 3-1. Enzo Cabrera with the double, Alice in play with one. A great performance again. The, the boys have really turned it around since the beginning of the season. They just need to keep up, keep improving, keep doing what they're doing, and hopefully we'll see ourselves moving up and up that table. Next up was away at Brentford. They were bottom of the league at the time of recording. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed in the performance. Brentford really did cause us some issues and some problems. Uh, upon reflection, it probably should have been a draw if everything was fair. But life's not fair. Harley Johnson and Lewis Enrique Aranz getting the goals and giving us the 2-0 victory. We were then at home against West Ham. We got beat 1-0. It was fully deserved. We did not create anything. Anything at all. We created nothing. Whilst they got their goal through Javier Hernandez. Apparently it should have been a draw. All fair. But we've had some things go our way. This time it went against us. In the last game since we last met was Notts County in the cup. We've beaten 3-1. I rotated quite a lot. 1 3 1, standard FA Cup third round. And that brings us to today against Newcastle United. One quick thing that I didn't show you was Francisco Trincao pulled his Tony's car from us. He's out for two to three months. 
So we're not going to be seeing him for quite a while. So this is the team that's going to start today's game. Matteo Rios keeps his spot at centre-back even though he played awful. But hopefully we'll start playing him some more. And he'll get more better performances as he settles into the squad. So we'll kick off against Newcastle United. We are shooting left to right. Please get the three points. <laughs> oh my god. Absolutely zero highlights in the first half. Nil nil. I'll get them back out. Highlight. It looks like it's going to go Newcastle United's way. Matt Ritchie's collecting the ball on this right hand side. Please pick up your men. Do not make any mistakes boys. Please. Right now come on break. Who's, who's the runner? Gwen Doozy gets past him. Down this right hand side to Cabrera. Can he get it back in to play 1 0 against Newcastle United at St James's Park? As you can see here, Plea holds the ball up nicely, plays it through to Gwen Doozy with a lovely pass through to Cabrera there. And Cabrera remains composed. He could have just snatched at that and the keeper would have pushed it wide. But we'll get the goal. Alisson play 1 0. Another highlight here long kick up by Newcastle. They've got all the space in the world in midfield. But now we just need to hold our positions here, not get pulled out too much. Make sure we're not we're tight marking. Don't give them too much time on the ball. Well cleared. Now Mbemba picks up the ball. Can they build from the back or are they going to make a mistake? Which is what I'm hoping. Clark to Vada to Moreno to Barkley. No, no Koulibaly. Do not get sent off. He's on a yellow. I had visions of him getting the second yellow there. Where's our boys? Come on, get in the box. Oh, I was kind of hoping play would just hold up the ball that way for someone to arrive in, but he went for the shot and then it hasn't worked. Right, because of the scare cooler ball he gave me, I'm going to get him off for Harley Johnson. We'll put Harley Johnson in the Metzala role and Gwen Doozy in the ball winning midfielder role. And we'll leave it at that for now. 91st minute, we'll make a few more changes to try and kill the game off. We'll take off Gwen Doozy for Santi. When we'll take off Wabi Kasri for Lucas Aranz. And that's going to be that. 94th minute in. Aranz with the ball in their box. Crosses it in. It's cleared. And that's it. We'll beat the Mags at St. James's Park 1-0. I'm really, really pleased. Particularly after that semi-final defeat last season. That might be a little bit of revenge. And I'm happy. <laughs> so after that result, Caesar's sitting 10th in the table. We're on 30 points now. 14 points clear of the relegation zone. And only 8 points behind. Chelsea in 5th position. If we have a run towards the back end of the season, we might see ourselves rapidly improving. But I'm not counting me chickens before the hatch. And if Moyes Keane was available, he would be starting up front. And I'm sure he would do us a really good job this season. But unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until next season to see Moyes Keane in action. One thing I forgot to talk about was the Champions League knockout stages draw. I can't believe I forgot about it. It's been done. We've got our challenger. Let's have a look. We have got Red Bull Leipzig in the first knockout round of the Champions League. Now, it was one of the more favourable draws, I'll not lie. But they have some serious, serious talent. Gabriel Jesus plays for them. That just tells you all you need to know. Upa Mencano, I'll go with that. He's absolutely brilliant. Centre half. Look at them physicals. I would absolutely kill to have him. And they've got Marcel Sabitzer, who's a really good Austrian winger. They've got the likes of Jung Min Son. They signed him from uh, Tottenham Hotspur for 23 million. So they've got really good players. We cannot underestimate them. And the way we've been playing this season, pretty hit or miss. We're, we'll really need to be on the top of our game if we're to get anything from this game. So that's enough from me today. But we will be returning to face Red Bull Leipzig in the first leg of our knockout champions league game well if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you're enjoying my content as a whole please consider subscribing but until next time take it easy